afternoon, Pio Nation. I hope you are doing well today. My name is Matt Williamson, and you are watching American College Esports. So we have our League of Legends team going up against Taylor University. Uh, we, as I said before, uh, we were not able to stream the Ohio Northern match against our Overwatch team. They are playing right now, so I'm going to try to keep an eye on how things are going and keep you guys updated as that game progresses. But they're already in the pro draft, so we're just going to go over there very quickly. So that way we can see all the bands and picks, and then we'll take care of the introduction stuff once we get through the draft. So looks like Marietta is going to be on the blue side and Taylor will be on the red side for the first game. And it looks like Marietta is banning Zinjal and Ramus. Uh, Taylor has banned Cassiopeia and Nivea. So there's some definitely some target bans here. Marietta seems to be trying to ban out uh, Taylor's jungle. And from what I've seen, their jungle is a master level player. So we definitely want to try to take away... Uh, some of the champions that the, the jungler is very comfortable with. We're seeing Maokai being taken out. I don't think uh, Maokai is necessarily jungle, but maybe that's a target in the... Maybe there is Maokai jungle. I don't know. But Taylor is going to be trying to take away either uh, Yone or Akali, kind of depending between the two, but definitely trying to target Ohoho, which is probably one of uh, Marietta's highest ranked uh, player on the team. And they are going to take away the Yone. So now we'll see what Marietta is going to uh, go with for their first pick. So we're just kind of waiting here. And it's looking like they're going to first pick Vi. So they will lock that in a jungle. Uh, I think Cilantro has been practicing a lot of Vi and doing pretty well with it. So I guess they're gonna just prior pick that and kind of take that away from uh, Taylor's jungle. But it looks like Taylor is going to go with the Caitlyn at ADC. So now we'll just see uh, if they locked it in. They, oh, actually they did lock it in. Now they're picking their second champion. And they're going to go with set. So they're going to probably pick that in the... Unless it's a set support, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a top lane set. Now we'll see... What does Marina pick next? They got about five seconds to go. And it's like they're going to play Sivir into the Caitlyn, so they will lock in the Sivir. Let's see what they decide to prior pick next. And it looks like they're going to go with Nautilus, so... All right, so I'm gonna go with Nautilus support. Interesting choice. And Taylor is immediately gonna go for the Olaf, looking for that early game advantage on the, the jungle. So now we're gonna see Akali being banned again, taken that away from Aho, but I don't know if he was actually gonna play it. Maybe? And Marion is gonna take away Ari. So some more mid lane targets. So we'll see what uh, Taylor wants to the band next. Nurk should take away Urgot in the top lane. Uh, Scrimpo has been playing some Urgot. I mean, he's got other top lane champions too, so I don't think that's as much of a concern. Now let's see what will be Marietta's last ban. And it's gonna be Cassidy. That is interesting. Very interesting, that's for sure. 
But okay, just more targets in the, the mid lane. So now we'll see what Taylor's gonna go with next. And they're gonna probably pick Victor in the mid lane. This is very interesting. So are they leaving support as their last pick, or is that actually a set support? I don't know. I just find it very surprising that they decide to go with the Victor now. That's going to give Marianne the opportunity to counter that. So they're going to go with Garrett in the top lane. So what will be the mid? Unless it's Garrett mid, but I don't think that's going to be Garrett mid. I know they're going to go with the Silas in the mid lane. Just stealing those ults. That could actually be very handy to be able to steal uh, any of these ults so far. It could be a huge playmaker for the Pioneers. And then, oh, and they're going to go with the, so that can't, I think that is a set support in Alawi top, but man, Alawi is so annoying to go up against. That is so annoying. But okay, that is what we are going to go with. So now we just got to get into the actual draft. So we'll see as soon as everyone's ready, we will uh, get things underway. Maybe. Not seeing anything in the, the match lobby that indicates that everyone is good to go. Okay, Taylor is saying they're ready. So I'm going to wait to see if Marietta's, Marietta's ready. So we should be starting very soon. All right. Give me a second here as I swap over to not that, but this one. There we go. All right. We are getting things underway. Now it's time to play everyone's game. Will we get through pro draft, but well, not just, oh, just regular draft. Can we get through draft without recreating it? Your guess is as good as mine. So far, the bands are looking good. Okay, so Garen top confirm, Alawi top confirm, so it is set support. Off jungle, we should see Vi jungle. And we're gonna see the Silas mid and then the Victor mid. So there we go, we got, we're about halfway through the, the draft. There's the Akali ban. And the Ari ban. There's the Urgot ban. And the Kassadin ban. to Caitlyn. And the Sivir. And 
There's the Nautilus. Just need to lock it in. Okay. Now we just need to lock in the set. Okay. I think we're good. I don't think anyone's going to drop. So we should be safe. All right, so everything looks good. So, um, while we're waiting for things to start, I'm just going to go ahead and get into some of the introduction stuff since we didn't get a chance to do that. So, let's first take a look at the roster for our League of Legends team. So, we have playing for today in the top lane, Junior Bryce Eman Scrimpo. At the jungle, we're going to have Junior Tyler Salonitro uh, Cilantro. In the mid lane, we are going to have uh, sophomore Alec Wong Ohoho. In ADC, we will have senior Steph Saunders Radio Soul. And then at support, we will have uh, junior Bethany Holstein Maxibu. And of course, we have our head coach Derek Games, our League of Legends coach uh, Glitch. And we also have uh, Kevin Johnson, who's helping both our League of Legends and uh, Rocket League teams. All right, go over a couple of quick announcements. Uh, so first, we do want to give a shout out to HyperX for being the official peripheral sponsor for Marietta College Esports. Uh, they've helped provide our facility with keyboards, mice, uh, headsets, mouse pads, microphones. Uh, our students absolutely love them. Uh, if you'd like to get your own HyperX gear, you can go to hyperx.gg slash Marietta ES. Uh, the QR code for that is up on your screen. I uh, also want to give a shout out to Over the Moon Pizza uh, for their support. Uh, every Tuesday, they have a Married to College night where our students can go and get a great price on pizza. Uh, they'll have a, a switch up where people can play games. They'll air, they air our matches to help promote our program. And it's looking like we will have matches on Tuesdays this semester. We did find out um, that uh, our Overwatch team will be participating in the NACE uh, Varsity Plus competition. Those will be Thursday, Tuesdays at 7, sorry. We'll get those schedules out um, in the coming days, but you can check that out um, so on Front Street at Marietta. Sorry, I uh, can hear the Overwatch team being really excited, so they're making some big uh, plays and some big call-outs. Uh, also, we're going to announce that we have our team store up courtesy of BSN Sports. So if you would like to get your own Marriott Esports swag, this is the time to do that. Uh, so you can go to bsnteamsports.com slash shop slash tpvzzkgekey. The QR code is up on your screen. I would recommend uh, just taking a screenshot and of the QR code or pulling up your camera. I'll have that here for... Uh, the rest of the time while we're waiting for the games to load. But we have shirts, short sleeve and long sleeves. We have pants and shorts. We have backpacks. Uh, we have jackets. We have hoodies. We also have our own Marion Ecology Sports jerseys. So if you want to get your own jersey, you can do so. You can even customize the name on the back of it. So... Uh, if you if you'd like to get that, this is the time to do it. The store is only up for a limited amount of time. So in fact, it's only going to be up until Thursday, February 9th. So if you're watching this on YouTube, depending on when we get that match up, um, it might already be too late. So if you're watching live, I would suggest um, placing an order for that. Uh, the prices are pretty reasonable, all things considered. Uh, I know I've already ordered a couple of things, like ordered a new polo. The the jacket looks amazing, so I, I got myself one of those and another uh, shirt. Uh, we do some logo variants every year. We let our students decide what that logo variant is. But yeah, definitely go check that out because uh, it's only going to be available until Thursday. All right, so the game is loading up. So just waiting to make sure everything is good to go, and then uh, we will get the game to you once it's fully loaded on uh, my end. 
So we're still just kind of waiting for we're just waiting for the, the loading screen here. Then once we have that, we'll get the game to you. Sometimes it just takes a, a hot minute to uh, to load into Summoner's Rift. There we go. Okay. It was uh, acting up for a second. I was a little concerned, but uh, I think we're okay. So let's go ahead and get into this game here. Marietta College versus Taylor University. Uh, Marietta will be on the blue side and Taylor will be on the red side. All right, so we're seeing the uh, the typical five points. Thirty seconds until minions spawn. So don't see anything too out of the ordinary. A few little pings going out here and there. Uh, it's looking like cilantro is going to start on the red side. But uh, Olaf was able to put down a, a ward into Marietta's blue buff, so they are going to know where Cilantro is starting. And Scrimpo did not notice it. No one was able to, to tell that he uh, went in there to drop the ward. Let me see. He's going to start the his red buff by himself. Uh, and meanwhile, Kaylin and Seth are going to just hang out by the blue buff to make it look like the leash is taking place there. But yeah, the ping is coming out. They Shrimpo tried to make it look like that maybe been starting at the uh, blue buff, but Taylor is fully aware of where uh, cilantro started. Yeah, so I think the they're gonna have some interesting matchups here. I mean, cilantro is a, a, kind of like a silver level, probably more like gold to be accurate, but going up against a master level jungle, so. Uh, jungle presence is going to be a huge factor in the early game and the fact that uh, Taylor went with Olaf for jungle means that they're looking for a huge early game advantage with the Olaf. Uh, mid lane matchup should be very favorable for Oho. But we're already seeing a little bit of a head in CS being able to push the wave, but it's going to have to be careful to not overextend. So we're seeing some pings coming out. Top lane overall seems to be okay, but uh, can Shrimpo manage the uh, those tentacles that spawn by Alawi? That's going to be the uh, the main thing. Because I don't know about you, but when I play against Alawi, it is a pain to go up against. And then we'll have to see how things go in the bot lane. They are getting pushed a little bit, but Sivir is great for wave clear. So if Radio Soul can kind of keep the waves well cleared, then that should help with some of the pressure in the bot lane. Okay, so we see Cilantro has gotten rib up and Olaf is gonna be looking for an early gank in the mid lane. And we're gonna start invading Cilantro's jungle, but not gonna find the Raptors there. And forces the flash. Gonna try to go for the first blood. Does get it. Cilantro gets stunned. Oho is gonna go down. Now Cilantro's gonna go up against the Olaf, which Cilantro's gonna have to flash away. And Olaf is gonna use Ghost to try to catch it, but is not going to. So it is a one for one trade, but Olaf is still in the jungle. Pings are coming out. And Maximum Radio Soul are going to have to be a little careful. They're going to retreat back to their tower. Meanwhile, Shrimpo is taking a lot of damage from these uh, tentacle things. But despite all that, Marietta will get the first blood. 
Um, so that does help. It's about a 300 gold difference. And that difference just seems to be a little bit in the, the CS and the bot lane. So not very, it's actually even close down to about 200 gold. So if Shrimpu can just keep the uh, those tentacles in check, I think he's going to be fine up there. He's already had a little bit in CS. See some training going on. Yeah, see, Strippos just continue to try to take down the tentacles as much as possible. Pings are coming out for Mountain Drake. So Launcher might have gotten a little bit caught. He's got the fall back and we're seeing that Taylor is going straight for that mountain drake and I think Marion is going to have to concede it because four from Taylor are there and we're seeing that cilantro can't dive in there oh stay in the mid lane they're just going to let that drake go We still see Sets and Olaf just kind of roaming around in Cilantro's jungle. They do, they do have a pink ward in the in one of the brushes. And I think they're going to try to see if they, they're going to steal Cilantro's red buff. Yeah, and they will take away his red buff with... It's not great. So at the point, they're still looking at about a 400 gold difference. So despite like the, the, the dragon and and some of the things that the uh, the master jungle's been doing, Mary is holding pretty well. Uh, we see Shrimp goes ahead and CS in top lane. Jungle, a little up, but not too bad. Slight CS differential in the mid lane, but I think it's, the difference is gonna be really that first blood goal. And we're gonna see Olaf popping the ultimate, and Cilantro's gonna go down. Max Boot has to flash away. Because they were eyeing Rift Herald and Cilantro just gets annihilated. Never seen bottom lane. There is a pretty substantial CS difference. But we'll see if Radio Soul can use some of her abilities to clear out some of the banes and get some CS. But with Caitlyn's long range, it is going to make it a little bit difficult. The ultimate does come out with the charge. Should be able to take out the set. They're doing the exhaust onto Caitlyn. And Radio Soul is going to have to get away. Use the shield. And they do get two kills. Maximum does take down the set to save Radio Soul. It even had to pop the heal to survive. So that is two more kills for Marietta to help close up the gap.
Okay, not a whole lot going on right now. Mountain Drake is going to be... Actually, it shouldn't be a Mountain Drake, because it was Mountain Drake the first one. I think it's, uh, it's probably Hextech Drake. Is my guess. Because the UI has not been updated properly to handle the other uh, Drakes. Okay, I'm just trying to get just a, a score update uh, with uh, the Overwatch team versus the Highland Northern. It looks like a Highland Northern is up two to zero. Uh, they just Highland Northern just won the the second map, so it is going to be match point for uh, a Highland Northern going into the the third map. So we'll see how Marietta uh, handles that. But I'm going to try to keep an eye on that while this match is going on as well. Looks like Mariana will t actually it's the Cam uh, the Cam Drake, but now we're seeing Mariana got the dragon, but Taylor is gonna go collapse right onto the team, taking out Cilantro and Shrimpo. First turret gold will go to Taylor. So expanding their leads are about 4,000 gold 12 and a half minutes in. So Mary has been able to take at least some objectives, but they are looking to collapse with uh, Olaf trying to make the plays. Marietta was looking to try to take down Lowey, but able to use that blast cone to get to safety. Max is going to try to get the hook onto Kaelin, getting some damage on her. Depth charge does come out for uh, Nautilus, but no follow up. And Cilantro is just going to get taken down by Olaf. Turbo's looking for the shutdown and does get the shutdown goal. Elawi is there though. Trip was going to try to get away, but will take a decent amount of damage. But the fact he just burned his ultimate takedown, uh, Olaf is going to have to try to keep his distance. see Set is just trying to roam around a lot, uh, putting down some wards. And Cilantro may be looking to make a play onto the set. Does know that Set is there. Or did he? Maybe he didn't know he was there. Let me see the ultimate does come out from Malawi. Not going to get anything out of it though. Another turret goes down. Meanwhile, uh, Taylor is going to uh, work on the Rift Herald, and they will take it. And they are trying to catch a ho. It's going to have to retreat. Did end up using the Victor ult and not get anything out of it. 
And Trevor's got to be careful. Most of Taylor's right there. And they may be looking to dive right on top of him. So he's going to fall back to try to stay alive. And they'll use the Rift Herald up here to, keep, to put some pressure. And they're already on the inhibitor tower and do take it down. It's only about 16 minutes, not even 16 minutes into the game. And already looking to put pressure onto the inhibitor. So Taylor is working on expanding their gold lead already over 6,000. And the fact that they were able to get inhibitor tower down uh, definitely opens up the map for them. Trying to chase down Kaylin forces the flash from her, but not able to get the, the kill. You see, Taylor gets the bait onto Marina, takes down Cilantro, and just trying to pick off the Piners over one, uses the showstopper to take down. Uh, Scrimpo, Radio Soul's trying to get away, but will not get away from the Olaf. And oh, it has been slowed. Ultimate's coming out by Alawi. Trying to go make the play. Meanwhile, Taylor does secure the Ocean Drake. And it was very close, but does not quite get that extra regen. Might have made the difference to keep Alawi Watt alive and take out a ho. Is it Olaf popping Ragnarok? Cilantro is going to have to get away. Taking some tower hits, but not worried about it. This is already very far ahead. 5 1 and 3. Just been making a lot of plays for the team. They're just trying to do their best to clear vision, but. Taylor is looking to collapse on the Pioneers. Baron will be up in about a minute. We're not even at the 20 minute mark yet and they're already knocking down inhibitor, or look at inhibitor towers. Let's see, Ohoho does go down. And they will take down Scrimpo as well with a double kill. That will secure that bottom tower. Meanwhile, Victor in the top lane is going to be working on that inhibitor. See the ultimate coming out for Vi. Not getting a whole lot on the Victor though. We're going to see Showstopper ultimate coming out by Silas, and they will take down the set, but Radio Soul is going to go down by Victor. Or actually, Silas didn't use that ultimate. It was just kind of the uh, set being a sacrificial lamb. And so the Olaf goes down, but towers are, being, are dropping left and right. Cilantro also goes down. Oh, this one kill, the shutdown goes couple of shutdowns but four of the pioneers are down and we're gonna see Taylor looking to try to clean up the rest of it they get two inhibitors down looking at the third it's 
So now all three Actually, sorry, the top inhibitor is still up, but two inhibitors are now down for Marietta, which is going to put that extra pressure. And it's going to be difficult for Marietta to get back from this. Uh, Taylor is already pinging the Baron, knowing that Taylor is going to... Knowing that Marietta has to spend her time in the base to clear super minions, Taylor maybe look at this opportunity to go for the Baron. Taylor will secure the Baron. Olaf's popping Ragnarok to trace right onto Radio Soul. Does get knocked back. But the rest of Taylor is there. They will take down Radio Soul. And they may be using this Baron buff to go straight for the Nexus Towers. And they collapse onto Barrier, getting three down. Just using the ultimate from Alali with those tentacles and with the Baron Empowered Minions, that could very well be enough to secure this first game. And with that, Taylor will take the first. Um, they'll take the first game. But, all right. I mean, a lot of it was just the the big CS differentials. Uh, Olaf going around making plays and Alawi actually went 4-0-4 uh, four, four that game. Like I said early on, Alawi is so annoying to, to play against. If you play against a good Alawi, it's just hard to beat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we will get into game two. Uh, trying to keep an eye on the Overwatch match as well. I think uh, they have swapped sides. It was Route 66, but now we're going to see um, how Marietta does on defense. It looks like they just fell a little short to the first checkpoint. So the win condition has been set for Ohio Northern. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, don't go away. We'll be back in a few minutes.
right, and welcome back. We are in the lobby. We already got Pro Draft up and running for game two. So let's take a look at what we got here. So it looks like Marietta has chosen red side. Same bands from before. It looks like Zinja, although they're taking out the Olaf this time and still banning the Maokai. Meanwhile, Taylor's going to take out the Cassiopeia, Nivea, and uh, Yone as they did in game one. And Taylor's going to first pick the Ziggs. Very interesting choice that they're going to go with that front right from the uh, get-go. But we will see uh, what Marietta decides to go with. I did get confirmation that uh, a High Lord did beat Marietta's Overwatch team uh, three to zero. Uh, so while the Overwatch team did take down Defiance, they did not prevail against the High Northern. And Marietta's going to go with the Vi again for the jungle. So we'll see. Will Marietta go with the same comp as before? Or they will they try something a little bit different. Uh, it looks like they are going to keep with the vine. They're going to stick with the Sivir as well. Let's see, it looks like Marietta is going, I'm sorry, Taylor is going to go with the Echo in that, well, okay, now we got some possibilities here. So there's Echo, there's Pantheon, and there's definitely some flex options with that. I mean, Echo could be mid or jungle, Pantheon could be top, it could be jungle, could even be mid, I think I saw it at support at one point. So that can be all over the place. So I guess we'll have to find out. And Marietta's hoverings, I would be, they're going to go with the Zack. Okay. So is this going to be like a, a Zack support? We'll have to see. Uh, Taylor's going to take away Soraka. Marietta's going to get rid of the Alawi. They did not want to go up against her uh, in this game. And Marietta's going to take away the Victor. And Taylor will take away the Akali once again. Is it Mary is going to go with Leona for support. So is that a top? Is that a top Zach? Or could it be? Maybe it's a mid Zach. I don't know where this Zach's going to go. I really don't know. Well, I know where it's not going to go. I know it's not ADC, Zach. I know it's not support, Zach. But that's all I know at this point. And it looks like Udyr is being... So that right now is going to limit some stuff. So that's an Udyr jungle. So I'm going to guess Echo mid. Pantheon top. And Ziggs ADC. We have seen, I have seen Ziggs go bot lane a few times. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bot lane Ziggs. Okay, okay. Now I'm trying to piece this together. So that's a vet, hmm. Um. Okay, I'm confused at this point. That should be a Vex. We basically have like three mid laners for this composition. So, like, maybe. Z and then Mary's going to go with Irelia. Once again, I don't know if that's top or mid. Um, so, let's see here. He zigs Pantheon bottom. Udyr jungle, Vex mid, and. Pa and Echo top? Is that right? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out in a second. Ready checks are coming out. 
We see Taylor is ready. Chat, what do you think? What's your prediction? Who do you think is going to go where? Because I have no idea where everyone is going to go in this case. So yeah, just take your pick because uh, I'm confused. Let's see, Marietta is ready. All right. All right, let's find out where everyone's going because I do not know. Waiting for all the the bands. So what? Wait, that's an Udi or top? Okay, it's an Udi or top. Zach top. And then Vine Jungle, Echo Jungle. So this should be Vex. Yeah. Okay, and then Irelia. into the bands. So we'll finish up the bands here. There's the sever. So this is probably gonna be Zig, well, be Zigs and uh, Pantheon support. There's the Zigs. And now they just got. Click in the, the Pantheon and then just go with Leona. Just pick Leona. And there you go. The draft is set, so now we gotta wait for the delay to kick in, and then we can be underway with our uh, second game. So while we're waiting, let's go over a couple of uh, other announcements. We, we mentioned a few earlier. Uh, so first, just mentioned that uh, we are always looking for more students for our esports program. So um, we have varsity titles for our for Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch 2, Rainbow Six, uh, Rocket League, uh, Super Smash Brothers, uh, and Valorant. And we're also trying to consider other titles as well. There's been some talk about Call of Duty, which I would love to put together. 
but of course we have to get enough people to to make that happen uh, but we have our dedicated esports facility on campus uh, we have several coaches whether it's we have not only our head coach but we have rocket league coaches and league of legends coaches and rainbow six coaches uh, we have uh, academic support for our students uh, and we do have scholarships available so you can go to linktr.ee slash marietta esports for more information uh, you can even schedule a, a discord call to talk with our coach uh, it also has links to all of our social media channels whether it's facebook or twitter or instagram or youtube but speaking of scholarships, we do offer scholarships for all uh, high school seniors and college transfers. All you have to do is to sign up uh, for a tryout to uh, register for it. So it's a three-step process. So first you would just need to fill out the recruitment inquiry form, uh, bit.ly slash MC recruit. And then you would schedule the, the tryout for the scholarship. So that's just bit.ly slash mcesport tryout. And then join our Discord server, bit.ly slash Discord. Now we have two different tryouts coming up in February. We have in-person tryouts on February 11th. That will be our in-person tryouts. Uh, so if you are coming to our winter open house, you could arrange to try out while you're here on campus. If you're not gonna be here on campus, uh, anytime soon, then you can set up a uh, range to do one of our online tryouts on Saturday, February 18th. So that's why it's important to join the Discord server because we'll have all of our tryouts uh, set up through there. Uh, so you can definitely fill out the information and then we can set the tryout where we would see you play. And hopefully we can say we can award you a scholarship. And if you have any questions, by all means, please uh, feel free to, to come talk to us. Uh, once again, just want to really emphasize the team store. So uh, courtesy of BSN, we have all sorts of Marietta Esports apparel for you. So shirts or pants or backpacks or jackets or hoodies uh, and even your own jersey. So you can get those. So all you have to do is go to bsnteamsports.com slash shop slash T-P-V-Z-C-K-G-E-K-Y. Uh, the QR code for that is on your screen. Uh, we do have some posts on our social media channels with clickable links because right now it's not really possible to click on the image there, but you can take a photo of it um, or pull up your phone and get the QR code for it. Uh, but the orders have to be completed by February 9th. That is this Thursday. And a portion of each item sold will come back to the esports program. So this is a fundraising opportunity for us. Uh, so I've already ordered a couple of things, so definitely check it out so you can get a few things. And we will have a couple other fundraising endeavors in the near future. We might have something in uh, the coming weeks that we're really stoked about. So just keep an eye out on our social media channels uh, for uh, some big projects that we have uh, coming our way. But all right, let's get into this game here. So Marietta College versus Taylor University. This time Taylor is on the blue side and Marietta will be on the red side. So we'll see if there are any level one shenanigans going on. I think Taylor is going to be trying something here. And they're going to be looking to do a, an invade. Try to see if anyone was in that brush. Not going to find anyone. Caution pings are coming out. Trippo's going to have to be careful. They think he might be there. He's going to fall out. Put the uh, ward down to see who's all there. So pings are coming out. They Marietta was able to catch up. So great awareness by Scrimp out the to get away the safety. And that did give Marietta a chance to get a deep ward into uh, Taylor's red buff to kind of spot out where they're gonna start. But we did see that Taylor was able to get a deep ward uh, by the red raptors in the uh, top jungle. So that will give 
Marietta some information. That'll, that'll give Taylor some information, but Marietta knows where Jungle starting. And Udyr Top is doing an insane amount of damage to Zack already. This is definitely an interesting choice by Shrimpo. Already very low. He has to back out before the minions. Like, I think it's the second wave of minions that came in and already having to back away. And having to pop his teleport early. So this is definitely going to be a difficult matchup for him. And then the Ziggs in the bot lane definitely looking to try to harass uh, Sivir, but as long as he utilizes the spell shield well, should be able to handle the, the Ziggs. But we are seeing some fighting going on in the, the jungle, forcing a flash for Slancho, but we're going to see a flash onto the Echo, but first blood will still go to Echo and actually gets the double kill. So Slancho and Aho get taken down in the process. Season train going on in the mid lane. Ho oh, gets some damage onto Vex. Not enough to finish him off. And Echo is waiting very patiently. And they're going to try to get the jump onto Oho. But the minion wave should help. But Echo gets so low, but will survive. And we see Leona and Vi are there to try to collapse, but they're not going to be able to catch the Echo, unfortunately. So Panther trying to get the jump onto radio, so using the W from Ziggs to bounce Sivir off the tower and give Panther a chance to jump in and able to get the kill. So we're seeing that uh, Taylor is playing a lot more aggressive than they did in the first game, already up by 2,000 gold five minutes in. Training going on in the, the top lane, but Udyr doing a lot of damage. And Cilantro is going to get the kill onto Vex. But Shrinko hasn't been able to do a whole lot. Dangerously low on health. Going to try to get some of these minions down, but the AoE that's coming out from Udyr is making it very difficult for Shrimpo to to take out these minions. But he's getting very low himself. Let's see, Shrimpo is going to lose his form, but Cilantro is going to try to chase down the Udyr. He's not level 6, so he's not going to be able to chase him down. Meanwhile, the rest of Taylor is going to be able to work on the Hextech Drake.
And you see Echo's just gonna go in and invade Cilantro's jungle. You know, the rest of Taylor, after taking blue buffs, is going to jump onto that bottom tower and take out all the turret plating and actually just finish off the turret. So we're already seeing a substantial difference in the CS in the bot lane 61 to 19. So they're trying to get the jump onto the back, so he will get the kill. Sancho's going to clear at least a ward, but now we're seeing that uh, Ziggs rotating over to the mid lane. Given the lead he's got, and we're seeing Shrimplet has to flash away just to stay alive. Meanwhile, Echo is there. Cilantro trying to flash through, but it failed. Max B pops the ultimate to slow them down. And that might have just saved his life. Hey, it saved Cilantro's life there. Nope. Yo, I trying to try to chase down the Vex. Getting a pretty decent lead, but you see some of the other leads are gonna kind of make up the difference. You know, we see a lot of damage being put onto this Udyr. Trying to use the sweeper to chase him down, and Shrimpo does get the kill on Udyr. And Oho will get the kill onto Vex as well. Meanwhile, we see Sigs and Pantheon putting pressure on that mid tower. And that will be another tower. Now they're going to be working on rotating up to the top lane. I believe Echo is already there onto Zack. He's going to leap away. So he will survive. Pantheon was going to be heading up to help him, but I think Zack is going to be able to back away. You're going to see the jump onto Oho, trying to pop ultimates. Udyr trying to, to help. Then they will take down Oho with uh, Udyr getting the kill. Now they may be looking at a, a jump onto uh, Shrimpo. And he's going to get stunned. I don't think he's going to make it back to his tower, and his pass is not up yet. So they're just going to use Ziggs to push towards the tower. Already getting Rift Herald in the process. So they're going to get all three outer towers down less than 12 minutes in the game. Leona's going to try to jump in, pop the ultimate, see if they can get the stun lock onto Ziggs. Flashes away. Throws out the bomb. And Cilantro does get the kill. And actually Pantheon goes down too. So all that's left is Echo. So two kills for none. But Taylor will get the turret in the process. Meanwhile, who tries to go after Vex who flashes away. We see Udyr in place. And Echo's trying to jump onto Cilantro, but... Trippo is going to be jumping and pops the bounce. And Maximus is going to use stopwatch to stay alive. But Echo will take down Cilantro, but Zack will take down Udyr. 
So now they're we're gonna try to chase down Echo, but I don't think they're gonna be able to catch him. Maybe so maybe looking to intercept, but Trico does try to get the uh tries to pull up a little bit, but see Pantheon is there to help. So that is gonna be a one-for-one -one trade in that top lane. Still looking at about a 3,000 gold difference at this point. So Marion is actually ahead on kills, but the problem is Taylor is ahead on objectives. They already got three towers down and it was a one-for-one -one trade in the bot lane. And Ziggs is looking to take down Stripper, who's extremely low in health and will pop the passive. And they are gonna finish him off. But yeah, the problem is Mary just is not able to get any towers down at this point. You see a couple of plates uh, taken care of in the bot lane and one in mid. You'll see Cloud Drake is up and Taylor will be going for it. They should be able to get without any issue. see Ocean Drakes for the rest of this. Well, Taylor's looking to collapse in mid lane. Ultimate comes out for Leona, but Cilantro is going to go down. And Shrimpo's going to have to use his bounce to get away. Barely survive. Actually, no, never mind. It does not survive. I really takes down Udyr. But Taylor's going to take down another tower. And they're just continuing their assault, utilizing the Zig's ability to burn down towers much faster. Already at 116 CS. And now they're going to be rotating to the top lane. Yeah, Taylor is going to use this opportunity to move, rotate the top lane, try to take down that tower. Marion is looking to try to get the jump. And they're going to be popping everything they got. They take down Pantheon, looking to try to catch Echo. But Udyr is going to come in, pop his AoE. Oh, he's trying to charge him, but he's going to end up falling. And Marion is going to have to fall back. Shrimpo is too low in health. Cilantro is one-shotable. So there's nothing else they can do at this point. So we're just a little over 15 minutes in the game and it's we're already looking at almost 7,000 gold difference. With five towers down, Taylor is looking to try to make a quick win. I'm trying to think, where's the fifth tower? My math's not right. This, I'm counting four. One, two, three, four. Oh, wait, the inhibitor tower. I, I did not see that. Yeah, so they, they must have gotten the inhibitor tower, and I totally missed that. And Taylor will secure the second Rift Herald, and I'm going to guess they're going to use that to push down that mid lane. Actually, no, they'll probably use that to push the uh, top lane. Taylor's going to be working on the inhibitors. And they're going to use the Rift Herald to try to force an early win. They're going to take down the Nexus Tower. Meanwhile, oh, is still in the bot lane trying to take down Vex, which he does. But 
We already have one uh, Nexus Tower down. The rest of the team is fighting all of Taylor's. Cilantro is going to go down. And so will Zach. So the Nexus Towers have fallen. Oh, is there? They're trying to help, trying to charge in. Echo will flash away. Pantheon is going to fall. Leon tries to get the stun on the Ziggs, has to flash away. So, Varian is still in it, but not by much. Now the Nexus is completely exposed. No Nexus Towers. And Ocean Drake's up in 40 seconds. So I don't think there's much Marinia can do to contest this. They have to go back and heal, but Super Minions are going to continue to pile down that mid lane. And if they try to push forward, then those Super Minions will take out the Nexus and end the series. See, Ziggs does take down uh, Radio Soul and Leona. And Taylor is just collapsing on the Pioneers. Slauncher does get one down, but he's going to fall. Zach's the only one that's left, but his passive pops. And that is going to be the match. All they do is just take down the Nexus. And with that, the Pioneers will fall to Taylor, uh, zero to two. But yeah, we, we just saw that Taylor decided to, to use a composition that went for a quick win. Using Ziggs to be able to burn down towers more quickly, knowing that he had the advantage in the bot lane, was able to rotate to all the lanes. Then after getting the first three outer towers, just going straight down the mid lane to take down the inhibitor towers, the Nexus Towers, and we're able to finish the game practically at 19 minutes. Uh, but that is going to be it for us today. We've had quite a few matches, um, gone up against a lot of great teams, but we still want to give a, a shout out to our Overwatch 2 team for uh, their first win of the semester against uh, Defiance. We are going to have quite a few, quite a few more matches for you next week. Uh, we just got the schedule for the NACE competitions, so. I'll, we'll try to get this out either later today or on Sunday, but Monday, it looks like our Valorant team will have a, a match against uh, Manchester JV. Tuesday, our Overwatch 2 team will have a match. Can't remember who off the top of my head. Thursday, our Smash team will have a match. And then on Saturday, we're going to have uh, a couple of matches. I believe a Rocket League, uh, an Overwatch, and a League of, Well, we had to reschedule the League of Legends match, but we'll get that scheduled information to you as soon as possible. So for all the latest updates with, with, with what's going on with Marriott College Esports, please be sure to follow us here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, Shouts again to HyperX and BS uh, and uh, Over the Moon Pizza. Sorry, it's been a long day. Shoutouts to HyperX and Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Don't forget about our team store. It is only going to be up until Thursday. Thank you all for your follows and thank you for your subscriptions as well. It is greatly appreciated. Anyway, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.